Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Digital. My name is Junior, and I am here to give you all of the best of what's going on in our digital world, uh, our Web3 metaverse world. And uh, I got a bunch of wonderful articles here for you today. If you like whiskey, then you're going to like this one by Johnny Walker, who's actually getting into the NFT business. Um, if you heard of the Board 8 Yacht Club before, you know how big they were. And it looks like another NFT project, a collection of, looks, I think it's about 15,000 uh, NFTs is actually going to be probably the next big thing from Board 8 Yacht Club, in my opinion. Um, Binance, Binance is doing something that's a little bit strange. Uh, well, I guess it's not strange. They're trying to uh, capitalize on a certain market when it comes to these stable coins. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. And then lastly, we have on here, um, wallet, wallet authentication. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on around actually authenticating your wallet. A lot of people are getting lost in the space of how to actually do it. And this one company may be the best way to get around it. So before we get started, we're going to take a quick break and then we will jump right into it. All right, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in with me on this show. I definitely appreciate it. So the first thing that I have off the block for you guys here today is all about Mr. Johnny Walker, the major whiskey label. They are now getting into the NFT space. And if you want to get onto it, uh, I definitely recommend you jump on it ASAP because tomorrow is when it will actually launch. Um, as you can see, this article just came out September the 2nd. And September the 9th, I believe, Friday, September the 9th, is when they are actually going to launch their NFTs in which you can actually get a blue label whiskey bottle. Um, and so with this, you don't actually have to get it right offhand. The company called, and I think it's called, uh, uh, where is that at? I think it's called like Black Bar or something like that. I'm just trying to... Okay, here it is. Block Bar. Blockbar.com. Um, they are the one that it looks like are in partnership with Johnny Walker for this uh, NFT launch. And the NFT will consist of 75 limited edition bottles of Johnny Walker Blue Label Ghost and Rare Port Dundas Master Set. Uh, I believe this is going to be the actual one here, the blue label box with the with the um, blue label whiskey in it as well. Uh, I tried to look on here and see what year it was. Uh, I'm not sure if that if that matters or anything to anybody. I'm not a big whiskey drinker myself, but I can't really see. Okay, maybe this is. I might have missed this portion. Explore the character of exceptional and rare whiskeys from one of the world's famous grain whiskey distilleries. The Glasgow Ghost Distillery of Port Dundas, which was built in 1811 and closed in 2010. Yeah, no, this wasn't it. I can't, I can't, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe this was bottled back then and they're just not coming out with it, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, but it is going to be a one liter bottle and you can actually get a actual physical bottle for it. But again, like I said, you don't exactly have to. The NFT bottle, which is just going to be a digital version of the bottle, uh, is a unique digital art piece um, by award-winning generative AI artist and photographer Ivana Tao. Uh, you actually get a behind-the-scenes and virtual storytelling experience as well for that. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be the NFT image here, but it looks actually pretty nice as well. Uh, and the main question is going to be, are you going to keep your nft or are you going to burn your nft i'm not sure if i talked about burning nfts before but really all that just means is that are you going to basically cash it in uh for whatever that you want to cash it in for um that way you don't you no longer own that nft it's basically null and void nobody else can get it either it's kind of like if you actually burn a piece of paper um but yeah so as i said 75 limited edition ghost and rare port dundas uh, master sets and they will drop on blockbar.com. So keep that in mind, blockbar.com at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Friday, September the 9th. So you guys have plenty of time to get your cash together, which will be $775 for each of those. And it can be purchased again on blockbar.com 
with either Ethereum or using your actual credit card. Uh, so you you don't exactly have to own any Ethereum, just have to have $775 worth of Ethereum or worth of fiat cash inside of your uh, bank. And then after you go ahead and mint it, uh, you will have 10 minutes to pay and to check out and receive your NFT, which will be stored with BlockBar until the bottle owner is ready to quote unquote burn the NFT to, in order to redeem it. Uh, and then, of course, bottle owners can gift or resell this NFT on BlockBar.com Marketplace. So BlockBar.com, I actually never heard of them. Um, so again, enter at your own risk kind of thing. But I believe if Johnny Walker is trusting in them, uh, again, Johnny Walker is a major brand. If Johnny Walker is trusting in them, um, then I would say they would would essentially be a good uh, marketplace or platform to uh, to do some business with in that case. Um, but again, enter at your own risk. All right. So the next thing that I have for you guys here today is going to be about, I call them Utes. It's Y00TS. Um, they're really bringing out the whole brand of that Y00T. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly or not, but, um, it's a whole big thing around it. I've been seeing them around a whole, whole bunch here. I'm pretty sure if you're in the NFT space, you've probably been seeing them around as well. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, and they're also bringing like a whole community, a whole economy around it. Um, like I said, you, if you want to get Ute listed, which is basically their take on being white listed, they have a quote unquote metaverse called Utopia um, and so on and so forth. But what exactly are they? Uh, so they, if you look at this image here, this is a sheep, I believe. I think that's what they said yeah so these are this is a sheep and the sheep actually has a couple of different layers of aspects to it that makes it degenerative art um, these are going to be and I think it was 15,000 but let me double check yeah so the team behind Utes promises to build a community of 15,000 of the coolest people in the web 3 using an innovative scholarship system and transparent mint list Moreover, the team wants you wants to test drive the idea of a new copyright and ownership system for NFTs they call Circle Y, I guess, which is a custom replacement for the commonly seen copyright symbol, which is the Circle C. Um, so instead of copyright, I'm assuming it's going to be a Ute right. I don't, I don't know. They're, they're, like I said, they're really bringing out that whole Ute ecosystem on that for everything there, um, and it's going to be built on top of these Solana blockchain, so definitely uh, take note of that. And it's actually developed by the same team behind the successful Solana De Gods collection. And uh, if you've been watching De Gods, I mean, they've been exploding. And I, I think it might be because these Utes here, uh, but the De Gods are actually exploding quite a bit. Um, so yeah, so what you would end up having to do is go to their website, which I actually did that as well. This, this right here is their website not much information at all and i think it's because they actually kind of got hacked a little bit a while ago because uh, i think they were called something else before utes and again I, I, I try to do as much research as i can before airing this show um, but there's a lot of information coming around about them uh, but i think they had another name for it they got hacked they kind of switched things up and now they're being a little more secure about it um so if you do check status you just check the status of your current um like listing or whatever uh, mint a tube t zero zero b t o b if i can click on that it just takes me over to this and again it's powered by dust labs again here as you see here your ticket to utopia awaits um, you can only purchase it with dust you know connect your wallet yada 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 and that's i mean that's really it there's no scrolling or anything like that on that um so yeah uh, this article here is fairly long, so you guys will have to do your due diligence and read all about it. Uh, but again, I just want to give you guys a quick snippet. Utes is an NFT collection on the Solana blockchain powered by Dust Labs. Also the team behind the De Gods uh, NFT collection. Before the idea of Utes came around, it was called oh, du Dupies, or Duppies, uh, which they originally planned as an expression collection to the De Gods ecosystem. However, in July 2002, the team announced an expected Duppies Mint at the end of early August. But after a Twitter hack, the team changed plans, saying we tried some stuff, we learned some stuff, now we're trying some new stuff. 
Then a collection of the used NFTs appears to be crafted from a single image of a sheep with various metadata layered on top of it to give the Utes uh, their characteristics. So pretty straightforward, it's pretty much everything I mentioned already. Uh, how much will they cost? So um, they Twitter suggests that it's going to be 375 dust tokens will be required to mint a Utes NFT at writing 375 dust costs at around $1,320 or 36 soul. Uh, and again, this writing was not too long ago. I guess it was updated September 6th. So like two days ago. Okay, so it was first written August 30th. So, um, so about a week ago. Um, and I'll just keep on going down. So, yeah, so that's how much it's going to cost. How do you get dust? Uh, as a native token of the Degas ecosystem, users can earn dust by staking Degas NFTs. However, the token can be purchased on the secondary marketplace if you do not have the gods NFT or dust. Uh, I'll probably just stick with soul. I mean, I might get dust later, but I'll probably just stick with soul. How do I get a Ute NFT? Again, you have to be um, on a list for the upcoming mint. Users must receive a scholarship for the Ute list. And then a Ute list is similar to getting on a pre sale for a project. And then, uh, those approved youth list, those approved for the youth list will need 375 dust to actually mint their NFT and so on and so forth. Uh, copyright. So this is one thing I want to mention. So copyrights, IP and youths, uh, the real juice in the youths collection is their approach to the rights and permissions they want to grant NFT holders. The current setup for most NFT collections is that holders secure IP rights on just the single NFTs that they hold. The, collect, the alternative is CCO or Creative Commons, which realistically means that an NFT holder's assets are stored in the public domain. When NFT holders want to build businesses, sub-communities, fan art, and more around their NFT, it usually drives increased interest and in turn increases the value of the NFT. However, the current setup doesn't support the idea of the entire collection benefiting, mean, meaning that if for example, if you own a board ape yacht club and you boost your board ape yacht club up to like, you know, $10 billion or something like that, the rest of the board ape yacht club owners does not get see any of that. Um, so with it being an NFT collection, you are saying that, Hey, um, we're all in this together. You know, if you boost your NFT up to $10 billion, the whole community gets boosted up to $10 billion as well. Uh, which in my opinion is, I mean, it's, it's actually pretty nice doing it that way. Uh, so when NFT holders want to build businesses, so can we, uh, I actually read that uh, the easiest way to think about the system outlined by Utes is that the Y circle Y is used as a way of registering a copyright with an NFT collection being the governing body. Each collection would have its cop circle <laughs> circle Y or Ute, right? I don't, I don't know what to call it. Uh, registry what, where it would be easy to track who's approved to use the NFT's IP. This allows projects to endorse and deny usage requests at Web3 speed. Uh, then it has some projects and workflows for Utes. How does uh, how does Ute Write make creators money? Uh, what's the Ute store? Customizing your Utes. Can I make money if I'm not an artist? The gods NFT surging. I guess they, they talked about this as well. Um, the collection has also seen more than 300% lift in trading volumes over the past 30 days. Yeah, the gods have been booming. Um, their Twitter account got suspended for some reason and so on and so forth. So again, you guys can go ahead and check out this article here. I don't want to spend too much crazy time on it. Um, but if you have not heard of use before, I would definitely say take a look at them. If you want to get into the NFT space and you have, uh, some extra cash laying around, um, because they may just be the next Port Ape Yacht Club in, in, in terms of explosion. Um, uh, they are, I've been hearing a lot of good things about them. Hopefully they're not, you know, a, a project that disappears over time. Um, but yeah, that'll be the only time could tell on that case. All right. So the next thing that I have for you guys here today is going to be about Binance. I'm pretty sure again, if you're in the cryptocurrency space, you've heard of Binance before. 
uh, what they're doing now is actually getting rid of stable coins well stable coins on their platform the reason why they're doing that is because they are coming out with their own stable coin and other stable coins are considered competition at this point so they are the issuer of third biggest stable coin to stop and they're going to stop larger rival usdc uh, the action effectively removed the world's second biggest stable coin usd coin as a tradable asset on binance giant platform um so yeah so so yeah so it announced that it will automatically move customers funds to is binance usd which is busd stablecoin from alternatives including the larger usdc usd coin uh, binance said on monday that it will convert all investments in usdc pax dollar and true usdc usd into BUSD on September the 29th. So you have until September the 29th, guys, to do something about this or just allow it to happen. Uh, and customers transferring those tokens to the exchange will see them automatically converted into Binance's stable coin after that date. However, customers will be able to withdraw money de denominated in USDC, USDP, or TUSD when removing money from Binance. Which is, I guess that's, that's a pretty good thing. It's just not going to keep hold of it. But if you want to remove money in those currencies, then you can do that. I guess that's, that's a, <laughs> nice of them, I guess. Um, yeah, so the decision effectively banishes the second largest stable coin from one of the most prominent purchases in crypto, erecting an obstacle to overtaking Tether, USDT, as the biggest one. Uh, I don't think they're going to get over Tether, though. That's That would be interesting. Um yeah, so stablecoin. If you don't know what stablecoin are, they are part of the crypto markets foundation, serving as digital substitutes for the U.S. dollar or other fiat currencies. Uh, stable comes from the fact that their price is pegged to a conventional currency or other type of asset such as gold. Each token tied to the dollar, for instance, is always supposed to fetch almost exactly one dollar. Though the quality of the assets backing a stablecoin can't influence how far the price strays. Um, so yes, you're not familiar with stablecoins. They are a good way to start getting into crypto. Um, they don't really like, I don't want to say they don't grow or drop in value because they, I mean, they do. They do, it's honest, honest thing. Um, but what they're supposed to do is stay like one-to-one -one level with um, the US dollar pretty much. Um, and most of the time they, they stay right around there, uh, which is nice because if you actually go out and pay for something, like say, for example, you went to Walmart and paid for something, um, you, what you pay for it, if it's like $10, you actually be paying $10, not, you know, $10 here. And then the next day it's like $8 or the next day it's like you just pay $50 for the same thing. It's supposed to stay around, you know, that $1 mark. Um, but yeah, so you guys let me know what you think about uh, Binance actually doing that i mean that automatic conversion to their binance stable coin there uh versus actually you know keeping it inside of um i guess usdc or usd um, tusd or whatever all right and so for the last thing that i have for you guys here today is going to be about something called web3 auth and uh, this is really just a Web3 authentication process. Uh, you probably, if you've done anything with digital wallets and stuff like that, you've probably came across this at some point. You just may not have known that you've done it, um, especially if you were going into utilizing your email and stuff like that to um, access like different Web3 um, platforms or whatever. Currently, when you are getting into some of these Web3 um, websites, Web3 platforms, stuff like that, you have to use your public key. Uh, make sure I say that correctly. Your public key is what you would be using. Keep your private keys private always. Um, if, for whatever reason, you forget your public key, um, you're pretty much screwed. Like There's no way of actually getting it back. You can use your seed phrase as a method of backup in order to like access your account still. Um, I still don't think, uh, yeah, I guess you, you can get your public key from there or whatever, uh, and so on and so forth. But the 
really what you, what you really don't want to lose is your seed phrase and you really don't want to use your private key as well um, those are the two main things you don't want to lose public key I mean you can actually have multiple public keys tied to one private key if you wanted to but that's a whole other story um, so when you actually access some of these websites and stuff like that using uh, web3 um, methods such as like you know just logging in with your wallet um, sometimes it's not very ideal and a lot of people aren't used to it so what web3 auth does is actually convert your I guess uh, what they call it, your public key into a method that you are more familiar with so for example just type it in your email then the web3 auth will take that email address and then send it over to their web3 auth um, thing or whatever and it will now start to look for your attached account so you would end up having to put your seed phrase inside of what they call recovery share method social login method and user device and then from there um, once it locates all of those different pieces of your seed phrase it'll now connect with that web3 wallet and then take that web3 wallet to be uh, or give you access to it essentially um, and then of course you have to make sure you validate everything by opening up your email and saying hey yes this is me this is correct I'm actually trying to access whatever 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 so hopefully that makes sense if not <laughs> I definitely apologize but I want to make sure I kind of because really this is a technical thing is more for like developers um, who are kind of getting into it if someone is actually using it it's not much that you have to know about what's going on under the hood on how it actually works um, so hopefully it doesn't go over too many people's heads but if it does just as long as you know that hey your stuff is completely secure when you use your um, your digital wallet or if you use your uh, email either way it goes it's still secure in that case alrighty um, and yeah so this is another thing on how exactly it works again this is their whole workflow might look confusing might look you know super complicated or whatever um, but it's not it's, it's really not it's nothing you have to worry about ex exactly off uh, a web3 auth or auth0 is, is on the back end of things the front end of things is really just you uh, accessing your keys and you accessing your seed phrase and stuff like that um, through a more traditional web2 method uh, and then I just want to go over here to the web3 auth web page here just to kind of show you what it looks like uh, as you can see over here on the right hand side it's going to ask you to sign in you can sign in via the web 2 method or you can sign in via the web 3 method uh, but now once you integrate all those two together you can actually just sign in with your email itself and it'll still work I think that had another I think this one was a little better so instead of signing in with social instead of signing with email instead of signing in with wallet um, you can use your quote unquote your seed phrase and that seed phrase is attached to your email address and you can just open up with your email address confirm login there and boom check mark you're good to go um, again completely secure completely safe I think web3 auth is one of the largest ones out there just like metamask is the largest like wallet out there currently uh, thanks to like OpenSea and stuff but um, yeah I'm not I haven't used this before myself so I'm not sure how it works with you know adding in your seed phrase and everything uh, I, I know you definitely want to keep your seed phrase uh, secure as well make sure you don't you know send that to anybody at all um, so I'm not sure how they would access it and use it in that case uh, you know it may you might just have to connect your wallet to it and that way it is like automatically knows your seed phrase or may just have like a secondary seed phrase or something like that for it but I'm not sure I'm not 100% sure um, so again what's one of those things proceed with caution uh, again, this is just their website here, and um, yeah, that's that's about it there. Um, so yeah, so you guys let me know what you guys think about Web3 Auth. Uh, if you use it for four as a developer, like I said, if you signed into a Web3 platform or website or anything like that using your email, you probably already integrated with Web3 Auth before. Um, just may not have known it. Um, but yeah, a lot of, I know a lot of developers are going that route because it really opens the door 
to people getting into you know the whole web3 space and everything like that a little bit easier in that case all right so appreciate you guys tuning in with me on today's show um there's a lot that's going on in our digital world i hope this does bring you closer to it i hope this does give you a little bit more clarification to it as well uh, if you have any questions at all please feel free to reach out to me i am um at junior event so at junior underscore event so pretty much across the board any uh platform out there you can find me at again all of my links are in the description of this uh this video and the links to all the articles are in the description for this video as well uh please comment let me know how you like the show i would love to hear from you and uh i'd love to hear what you also have going on as well there's a lot of stuff that uh, really cool people are doing inside of this web3 blockchain cryptocurrency nft space um ar vr xr and all that stuff so i want to want to know all about it uh, so that i can help share it to the world all right so again i appreciate your all time and you all have a wonderful rest of your day